Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are revisiting the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti, which is now a five-year-old product, so it is getting on a bit. But back in 2017, it had no competition, unless, of course, you count Vega 64, which I very much don't. So that being the case, I think $700 US now seems pretty reasonable for a flagship TI graphics card. Oh, how the times have tabled. Anywho, I'm not here to feed into your growing GPU depression, and maybe, just maybe, we can put a positive spin on this one. Not sure how, but we'll work that out as we go. Now, for this Mega 50 game comparison, I've got two reference points, one being the current generation and slightly less than $400 US RTX 3060, along with the previous generation of Radeon GPU that we also revisited recently, the Radeon RX 5700 XT. And yeah, I know including the 6600 XT would have been nice, but I've got way too much updated CPU testing to do right now. So I'm gonna need you to get all the way off my back on that one. And now that you've climbed down from that thing, let's go over the test system specs and then jump into the data. For testing, we're using our Ryzen 7 5800X 3D test system using 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL14 memory, along with the latest available display drivers. Resizable bar has been enabled for all 50 games tested at 1080p and 1440p. And we'll take a close look at the data for about a dozen of the titles tested before jumping into the usual breakdown graphs. Please note all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members. Okay, let's get into it. Starting with Hitman 3, we find that the GTX 1080 Ti is still very capable here, despite coming in well behind the 5700 XT and RTX 3060. The 1080p results see it roughly match the 2060 Super, which meant it was 16% slower than the 5700 XT and 12% slower than the RTX 3060. And even at 1440p, we're still looking at over 60 FPS on average, so certainly very playable performance there, though the 5700 XT was 12% faster and the RTX 3060 26% faster. Still though, despite that, I think it is fair to say that the flagship Pascal GPU has aged rather well. The Warhammer 3 results are surprisingly competitive as here the four tested GPUs delivered virtually identical performance at 1080p and 1440p. So that being the case, the GTX 1080 Ti has aged rather well here, especially given you're looking at having to pay around $400 US for an RTX 3060 right now. That said, the RX 6600 is a much better deal, but the point being for a five-year-old product, the 1080 Ti is still very capable. The 1080 Ti is also able to provide highly playable frame rates in Far Cry 6 using the high quality preset with HD textures enabled. That said, the generation newer 5700 XT does benefit here from support for resize wall bar, giving it a massive performance boost over the 1080 Ti, allowing it to deliver almost 40% more frames at 1080p and 25% more at 1440p. So when compared to newer GeForce GPUs, the 1080 Ti is comparable to today's $400 options from Nvidia. Now where the 1080 Ti is still able to hit full stride is in older games such as War Thunder, where it's actually quite a bit faster than not just the 5700 XT, but also newer mid-range GeForce GPUs such as the RTX 3060. For example, at 1440p it was 35% faster than the 5700 XT and 22% faster than the RTX 3060. Next up we have Rainbow Six Siege, and this is another older title which Pascal will be well optimised for, and as a result the GTX 1080 Ti does really well here, pumping out well over 300 FPS at 1080p, placing it alongside the 5700 XT and RTX 3060. It's a similar story at 1440p as well, the 5700 XT still had a slight performance advantage here, but we're talking about a mere 5% difference. Cyberpunk 2077 is a fairly poor showing for the old GTX 1080 Ti, especially relative to newer mid-range GPUs. At 1080p, the 5700 XT was 25% faster, the RTX 3060 15% faster, and the RTX 2060 Super 8% faster. All of that said, the 1080 Ti did fare a lot better at 1440p, as here the 5700 XT was 18% faster, and the RTX 3060 just 11% faster, so not bad, though we are only looking at 57 FPS on average. I think it's fair to say all tested GPUs delivered more than enough frames in Death Stranding, even at 1440p, so the GTX 1080 Ti is still holding on really well here, outpacing the RTX 3060 by a small margin at both tested resolutions. The 5700 XT though continues to impress with surprisingly strong performance, beating the 1080 Ti by a 16% margin at 1080p and 12% at 1440p. 
Moving on to F122, we have another game where the GTX 1080 Ti is delivering exceptional performance with 201 FPS at 1080p using the high quality preset. Sure, you can't use ray tracing, which is also the case with the 5700 XD, but ray tracing brings virtually nothing to F122. Admittedly, it does look good for screenshots, but as for playing the game, you'll be hard pressed to notice the difference. Anyway, that's subjective, and all GPUs were tested here with RTFX disabled, and that means the 1080Ti and 3060 are basically identical, and really so is the 5700 XT. Performance in ACC is also excellent, as here the GTX 1080Ti was good for 193fps at 1080p, and 65fps at 1440p using the medium quality settings. So if you want, you could increase the visual quality here and still receive a high refresh rate experience. The 1080 Ti was also not just faster than the 5700 XT, but also the RTX 3060 at both tested resolutions. Halo Infinite is a newly released title where the GTX 1080 Ti doesn't perform particularly well relative to the newer mid-range GPUs. At 1080p, for example, the 5700 XT was 24% faster and the RTX 3060 23% faster, and even the 2060 Super, that was 16% faster. So really a weak result here for the aging Pascal flagship GPU. Having said all of that though, the 1440p results were more competitive as here the 1080 Ti delivered similar results to that of the 2060 Super. Hunt Showdown is four and a half years old at this point, so it is an older title and it's one that Pascal should be well optimized for and that does appear to be the case. The GTX 1080 Ti was 9% faster than the 5700 XT and RTX 3060 at both the tester resolutions. Now, God of War is a new game that Pascal works really well with, and here the GTX 1080 Ti can be seen delivering RTX 3060 like performance, making it slightly faster than the 5700 XT and RTX 2060 Super, so a good result here for the old GeForce GPU. Now, Forza Horizon 5 benefits massively from resizable bar support, and this is one of the key reasons why the 5700 XT totally annihilates the GTX 1080 Ti offering a massive 33% more performance at 1080p and 25% more at 1440p. The 1080 Ti though doesn't perform poorly when compared to the GeForce GPUs as it did roughly match the RTX 3060 here. It is a bit hard to say how these GPUs compared based on that sample of games. Sometimes the 1080 Ti was much faster than both the 5700 XT and RTX 3060, while other times it was a bit slower, or maybe much slower depending on the game. And there were quite a few instances where the performance was much the same. So, since I have tested 50 games in total, let's go check out the full breakdown. Starting with the 1080 Ti and 3060 comparison at 1080p, we find that on average the old 1080 Ti was actually 3% faster and enjoyed some pretty big wins, though admittedly most of them were in the older games tested. Meanwhile, all the games with the 1080 Ti lost by double digit margins were released in the last two years. Still, overall, these two GPUs are roughly on par in terms of performance. Now, compared to the 5700 XT at 1080p, the margin swings the other way. So, still an insignificant margin, but here the GeForce GPU was 3% slower. Again, it's the older games, or games that use the Unreal Engine, where the 1080 Ti performs best. Meanwhile, in newer games like Far Cry 6, Forza Horizon 5, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Cyberpunk 2077, Halo Infinite, and Hitman 3, all heavily favoured the Radeon GPU. So without question, RDNA has aged better than Pascal, and will almost certainly continue to do so. Moving on to 1440p, we find that when compared to the RTX 3060, the margin overall is much the same going in favour of the old GTX 1080 Ti by 5%. Again, it's the older games like The Witcher 3 and War Thunder, or the Unreal Engine based games such as PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds and The Outer Worlds, where the GTX 1080 Ti does best, while it's typically the latest titles where it performs at its worst. Finally, when compared to the 5700 XT at 1440p, we find that performance overall, it's a tie, which is probably more impressive for the Radeon GPU given it was quite a bit cheaper though it did arrive two years later, so probably to be expected, even in today's GPU market. Having said all of that though, it is worth noting that last year when I compared the GTX 1080 Ti and 5700 XT and 35 games at 1440p, we found that the GeForce GPU was on average 6% faster. Of course, there were a number of different games included in that testing, and many of the newly released games where the 1080 Ti doesn't fare quite as well weren't included for obvious reasons, 
the most obvious of which being that they weren't released yet. Still, it is interesting to see that things are starting to favour the 5700 XT, and it'll be very interesting to see how they compare by this time next year. Purely from a performance standpoint, I think it is fair to say that five years on, the GTX 1080 Ti is still going strong. That said though, I reckon if you snapped one of these up for about $700 US back in 2017, because you demanded the absolute best, then there's a good chance you've already moved on. Probably not to Turing though, as the RTX 2080 and 2070 Super delivered a similar level of performance for similar money, but I reckon many would have been tempted by Ampere, should they have been lucky enough in the last two years to find an RTX 3080 at or near the MSRP. Upon release, the RTX 3080 was almost 60% faster than the GTX 1080 Ti at 1440p and almost 80% faster at 4K. So a massive upgrade there for those of you holding out. That said, at this point, we actually don't recommend buying a high-end GPU because the next-gen models are just around the corner and prices will no doubt fall even further once those next-gen GPUs are announced. As we just saw, the GTX 1080 Ti is comparable to the RTX 3060 in terms of frame rate performance, and given the mid-range Ampere GPU retails for around $380 US right now, the GTX 1080 Ti was 84% more expensive, though keep in mind the 3060 is meant to cost $330 US. Still not too bad in terms of performance when you look at it that way. That said, the 5700 XT, which is also comparable to the RTX 3060 and GTX 1080 Ti in terms of performance, that sold for $400 back in 2019, so that's a bit of a buzzkill for the RTX 3060. The Radeon RX 6600 XT is also around $40 US less than that of the RTX 3060, and it does offer comparable performance. So that being the case, our advice for the past few months has been to either hold out for next-gen GPUs, or if you're more of a budget shopper, snap up the 6600 non-XT for just $260. At that price, the XT version is a little over 30% more expensive, and on average only delivers around 15% more performance, so the RX 6600 is the value king in our opinion. It also means you're getting within 15% of the GTX 1080 Ti for well under half what you would have paid back in 2017, so again, not too bad at all. Anyway, it is good to see the GTX 1080 Ti still going quite strong today, and while it is showing clear signs of dropping off in many of the newer titles, performance is still acceptable and really quite good given its age. That said, it's also nice to see the availability of products that can deliver a similar level of performance for considerably less money. We do always love to see that. And with that, I'm going to wrap this one up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed yet another revisit of the 1080 Ti. We'll probably do it again next year, so make sure you subscribe for that. And of course, we have a lot more interesting content coming up before then. If you like the video, yep, do that. Uh, also, if you'd like to become a Harbor Unbox community member, uh, get all the extra graphs and just support our work, then there is Floatplane and Patreon. You get some other cool perks as well. We have an exclusive Discord server, absolutely awesome tech community there. Great place to hang out and talk tech. We also do a monthly live stream for members. Uh, there's behind the scenes content, a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes now with Harbor Unbox, so you can check those videos out and Q&As. So if you're interested, check it out, but if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.